you are. Ooh. Damn, you don't know your own strength over there. <laughs> I do. I think uh, I want the long one. This is too short. Well, too bad, isn't it? No, it's not. I'm going to buy me a longer one. I don't like this. All right. Now you ready? Yes. All right. Sorry. Hey. Okay, never mind. You're not ready. I guess I wasn't. I'm sorry. Okay, now, now are you ready? <laughs> yes, I am. Hey, welcome to another episode <laughs> of the Blackout Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Joining as always by my co-host, uh, Karen, who was actually ready to start this time. And we are live on a Tuesday, ready to do some podcasting. Uh, you know how it is. Search us out. Just put the Blackout Tips everywhere you get podcasts. And there you go. Like us. Leave us five-star reviews. We appreciate y'all to take the time to do that. The official weapon of the show is the taser, an unofficial sport, bullet ball, and bullet ball extreme, extreme, extreme. Um, and I say we just kind of get into the show. Okay, there's a lot to talk about. All kinds of random things are happening. Uh, I guess uh, where should we start? You know what? It's been a, a second, but there's still a little bit of coronavirus news. So, oh shit, coronavirus. Again? Look, here we go again. We got variants. Really need to keep a mask on hand and follow the plan. Get the vaccine and second shots. Whether woman or man, black out who tips is doing their part, but the dummies expand. Niggas would rather believe a bunch of misinformation. Fuck y'all idiots, not getting shots. Now we gotta regress if we keep going in this direction. We never can rest. Never can get back to the lives we be living the best. Damn. Fool, stop the lying, stop the intubation crying, cause it's your fault that motherfuckers dying. Huh? Damn fool, stop the lying, stop the ventilator crying, cause it's your fault that motherfuckers dying. I do not understand this shit, I'm not a fan of this. We were like one win from the pandemic championship, but fuckers wanna leave it to game seven with Giannis Delta Kupo blocking forward progression and Chris Middle fingers to your plans, man. Damn, huh? looks like it's no Drew Holiday for you and your man. So sick of black people dying for real, so I'm just writing this. New piece to let you know how I feel. Uh, coronavirus. Yeah. Fuck that COVID 19 is unseen. It's creeping in the air for you to breathe. Yeah. Huh. So fuck that COVID 19 is unseen. It's creeping in the air for you to breathe. Yeah. All right. Coronavirus news. Florida health officials remove key data from COVID vaccine report. Florida Surgeon General Joseph Ladapo announced in October that young men should not get the COVID 19 vaccine. Guidance that runs counter to the medical advice issued by the CDC uh, and pretty much every other Surgeon General in America. Uh, his recommendation is based on state analysis that showed the risk of cardiac related deaths after receiving a vaccine increased significantly for some age groups. Well, now it's been criticized by experts, including professors and epidemiologists at the University of Florida, where he is employed as, an, as a professor. Right. It's like, yo, dumbass, like, this is what the fuck we do. You have people there who got, I got a PhD in this. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I mean, he's a professor there too. And his own university is like, that's not true. Right. Now draft versions of the analysis obtained by the Tampa Bay Times through Florida's public records law show that recommendations, that recommendation was made despite the state also having data indicating that catching COVID-19 raised the risk of cardiac related events, uh, uh, deaths by at least five times more than the vaccine. Right. That Which makes we've sense. said on the show before, we've mentioned it, you know, many, many times. Every time someone brings up some anti vax shit and they're like, well, the cardiac risk is like, yes, but catching COVID is much more riskier for the same young men. Well, that data was missing from the final version of the analysis that was compiled and posted online by the Florida Department of Health and was never mentioned by the Surgeon General. Right, because they, they chose to opt to leave it out on purpose. I honestly don't. And I mean, the political pressure from DeSantis, I'm sure, has something to do with it. Of course. You know, the fact that they fired that woman uh, for like, you you know, when well, she was like, I'm telling the truth, they're hiding data. And she got fired, harassed, sued, you know, a bunch of shit. Um, it's, it's, it's unconscionable what they've been allowed to to give get away with and to and do. to like the stuff that people say about like democrats and joe biden and stuff being in charge in the pandemic it, it really is happening with republicans it's not a conspiracy we have evidence and people just don't it's like we just accept it from them like oh well, hey. sometimes you just you know risk everybody's life and you know like if your kid died of heart complications from COVID-19 or just has heart complications after having COVID-19 in Florida, you should be able to like sue the state or some shit. Like y'all motherfuckers told me 
don't get vaccinated let your kid go play sports and now my kid has fucking like a regular heartbeat or some shit um why like or myocarditis or whatever myocarditis mm-hmm. like my kid has this now and they weren't vaccinated because your advice yes your advice the people that are supposed to govern over us like this is your whole goddamn job and you're not doing your job and then you don't want to be held accountable for the well, bullshit he, that's the thing he's doing his job badly on purpose he stands by by the way as surgeon general my decisions continue to be led by the raw science, not fear. Far less attention has been paid to the safety of COVID-19 vaccines and many concerns have been dismissed. These are important findings that should be communicated to Floridians. So just blatant, it was science. Well, the science, if you're led by science, it should point out that you would want kids to get vaccinated because it still lowers the risk compared to getting COVID. And you left out key information that you act like it don't yada, yada, yada. This is the findings. Was, well, you left important information out that says if you don't get the shot, it's even higher. Fuck that science though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, uh, but Co- but he basically is in Florida and Ron DeSantis has his back, so nothing's going to happen to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Last orders. British pubs closing at a faster rate than during COVID-19 and it could get worse. So I guess bars are having a hard time uh, there. Oh, bringing people back in? Like, I, it, I wonder what's causing that problem. In 2022, after the UK emerged from the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, 32 pubs were lost on average each month with 386 disappearing in total. But 153 pubs have closed their doors in the first three months of this year, which is up nearly 60% of last year's figures. Hmm. I wonder if it's because you do have a subsection of people that are like, hey, doll, I still might go out, but what I'm not going to be in is in this packed bar with y'all breathing the shit. Like, there are some people that go, yeah, I'm being cautious, but there's something like the movie theaters. Like, it's some shit people go, I might decide to get that up because it ain't that important to me. Like you said, people are picking and choosing their level of comfort. So a lot of these places that people used to go to, people are like, mm, I'd rather not for whatever reason. I think that's definitely attendance has got to be part of it. You know, I'm sure there's people that still aren't going out and you can't blame them. Um, and then also a lot of these businesses were operating on very thin margins in the first place. You right. know, restaurants are extremely hard to make profitable and stay in business. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, um, like the cost of business has gone up in a lot of areas with inflation and stuff. So it probably is even harder. Um, yeah. And also it would not be surprising if, uh, employees, you know, that like, like you, it's hard to get people to come in there and say, Hey, come in here. You're going to be in here with no mask on, you know? Well, I think, like that. I don't think the employees part is, is, I mean, it's definitely matters, but it only matters if you got a crowd, like, that's true. You know, we've gone out places and it's just, it's less people out than, than it used to be. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, there's less people working, but like at least amenable to the amount of people in a place, they seem, they seem to have 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 the amount of like employees now that you know maybe that's different in the uk right so but that, that's... i'm just saying like the it's not mentioned in the article okay. like the issue with staffing they're talking about the taxes on um the building and stuff landlords don't have uh... don't have the money so then they want to raise the prices but then you raise the prices and people are like last time i went out two three years ago Beer was this much. Now is this much. So what I do, I go to the grocery store, go to the ABC store, and make my shit at the house. Like fuck this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I can see that too. Yeah. The British about a Brexit, which is probably plays a bigger factor than anything else. Yeah, they do say that there's like a cost of energy bill, food and drink are more expensive by rising inflation, and that the British Beer and Pub Association has warned that on average pubs will be handed an annual. Uh, 18,400 pound, I guess, uh, bill for energy by the end of this month after the energy bill re- relief scheme comes to an end. So they're they're also winding down their pandemic programs that support of businesses and people. So all right, and people yeah. they can't afford that. You like about that. to catch that check. Speaking of which, free COVID tests. Um in and May, uh, a lot of this stuff is coming to an end. So, yes, like if you're not care brought it up several times on the show. 
if you're if you have the kind of insurance where you can just like uh, call up a CVS or a Walgreens or something and say, hey, I would like three tests every month. They will give them to you. Just go in there and get them. And it's written off on your insurance. Well, that benefit was paid for through the government and stuff. And that mm -hmm. program is coming to an end in May. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, the national emergency um, status for COVID has ended, you know. So, uh, mm -hmm. like, it's official. Yeah, and, you know, things like that matter, you know, because basically uh, what people were doing, which completely made sense, you basically stock up on tests in case, you know, you do things, you're traveling, you're out and about, somebody catch a cold, let's see, let's see what it is. Like, it's yeah. good just to have it around. And buying them shits one by one is very expensive, particularly if you do, like, the two tests. And the ones they give you is the two tests. So you get three two tests. So for every person on your insurance plan, you get six tests every month. And so you have to do everybody individually, but it's worth it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like we have more tests than we need, but I'd rather have these tests sitting around and go, oh, let me test myself to be sure than not to have it and have to go to the store. Yeah. So that's ending. Um, as is the emergency thing, uh, the emergency um the national emergency status of COVID-19 is ending as well. Um, and it started like, cause it, obviously Biden signed the bill, but it's a bipartisan congressional resolution to bring it to an end. So it's not like a one, one off thing. It was six, it passed 68 to 23. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people uh, across the board, Democrats and Republicans are like we got to move past this COVID shit. Like they don't, you know, and a lot of it is because the it's it's everybody's playing a role. You have the general public that's going, okay, we tired, but they've been tired of we tired of it. Let's go back outside. We tired of being shut in the house. Let's just open everything back up. So they were like, if that's what you want, we just open everything back up. But also opening everything back up means why do we have these programs then? Like the fuck we got these programs then if everybody's gonna go back to normal. Yeah, I think um, I just I guess I never thought it was going to be forever. Mm -mm. So I just I figured it was coming to an end at some point. So I just don't have like the frustration attached to it, I guess. I honestly think it lasted a lot longer than um, than I even anticipated, right. like especially once we had midterms and not enough people turned out to make sure Democrats won um mm -hmm. in 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 the um in the house because you know the senate we everyone was concentrating on the senate but it was like a foregone conclusion we were gonna lose the house and we did but barely but we just needed a few more people to give a fuck but we knew as soon as republicans got the rain they were killing all this shit they were killing shit when it was 50 50 when it was a 51 50 they were they were like no we not we not voting along any lines that will provide any extra aid for people experiencing hardship during COVID. Not businesses, nothing. And so this was happening at some point. The only thing holding it together was the president at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and respect of respectively, the numbers have declined. We're never getting to zero. So mm -hmm. at some point, they had to make the decision of like, what are we going to look like unless we have some type of variant that pops up that like supercharges everything again they're not they're not going back and right. even with that it would take a lot it wouldn't just it couldn't just be mm -mm. like oh the numbers went up a little bit this month it's got to be some like the hospitals are full and nobody can get in and out type of thing yep and that's you know that's what happened particularly with america everything is individualized we you know, our country doesn't function as a unit. <laughs> and so when you have a country that doesn't function as a unit, which means you don't really consider or think about other people around you, it's only me and mine. These are the conclusions. Uh, it's like, hey, take care of you. You know, uh, uh, we're not worried about the masses. We're not worried about the people that can't afford. We, 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 we can't be concerned about them. Only be concerned about you and yours. You know, this individualism, this is the end result of that. Nobody actually ca really cares about anybody else that's going to be impacted by their actions. Well, also, we care about money, right? Like mm -hmm. this next article, Walgreens profit slides as COVID-19 vaccinations fade in quarter two. The fact that we're even reporting on the the stock of these companies as if that's the issue, you know, as if that's what we were concerned about in the pandemic was, well, let me check my Walgreens stock, you know, <laughs> like, 
<laughs> it's like, I don't know. I was probably checking to see how many people died, how many people didn't die, mm-hmm. uh, how, you know, what the next variant was. Like, I was checking that shit. But that's America in a nutshell is us sitting around going at, like, you know, the news somewhere being like, people need to know about this. Ever since the vaccinations went down, Walgreens stock is not as profitable as it once was. We're going to need another opioid crisis to get us through this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man y'all laugh keep them crying um <laughs> all right y'all that's it for 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 this uh for this coronavirus segment let's get into some other news uh <laughs> drug officials issue a warning for the resurgence of Colombian crack. Colombian crack? That's a different kind of crack? That's that Colombian crack. It's like how Colombian necktie different. Oh, shit. Um, I didn't know the, the crack was racial. I thought crack was crack. Well, crack is definitely racial, but Colombia is not necessarily race. It's a country. Uh, the 80s are back, which means so is crack. Drug officials say there's a record influx of Colombian cocaine that has spurred the return of crack. The cheap smokable drug caused a crime wave across the country, including New York in the late 1980s and 1990s. Oh, no. That shit destroyed families for decades. We're seeing a resurgence of crack. The demand never really went away, but the supplies increased exponentially, said Frank Tarantino who has the DEA's New York division. Now, it is New York, so their press has a lot of fear-mongering when it comes to, like, uh, drugs and crime and shit. Like, it's just, that's just the way it is. So it could be, you know, it's like, take it with a grain of salt. You know, this is the cops talking. You know, these are the same people that seem like, Pick, you know, like, uh, somebody left some stuff on the, on the subway. It was, like, cold medicine dog food and some other shit and it was like people are making meth on the subway and it's like that those are not the ingredients for meth uh, do you know how to make meth i don't but i don't think it's that you know like i don't think you know i don't think a helium balloon is <laughs> that don't go into meth <laughs> i don't think it needs h2o to make meth What's they got napkins they got uh they got Taco uh-huh. Bell fire sauce. <laughs> Clearly, this man was making meth. <laughs> and a little bit of Skittles. It's yeah. meth. Oh, that's nutmeg. This is meth. Um, <laughs> it's freaking the pepperic on it. This is meth. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but they're saying Colombian crack it might it might be back, you know. So we'll see I what hope happens. Not. Yeah. Um, who knows? I do feel like we're back to being outside because I start I see articles I don't cover them on the show but you see articles and motherfuckers is getting killed left and right it, it feels a lot like it does feel i don't know that this that this is what's happening but sometimes you read shit and it does feel like we're back in the 90s and and 80s with the, some of the like crime you hear about like mm-hmm. the baltimore mayor who everybody loves mayor bay young black dude um, he's had to implement a summer curfew after two teens were shot while officers attempted to break up a group of minors. According to WBAL-TV, over 200 teens had congregated in the city's Inner Harbor neighborhood Ooh. around 9 p.m. where police attempted to break up a group when a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old were shot and injured. Uh, one of the victims is in critical condition. The other one is stable. According to police, two suspects were detained. One was found with a loaded gun in a parking garage, and the other had a loaded gun that matched the shooter's description. Following the incident, Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott said that for the upcoming summer months, a curfew of 9 p.m. for those under the age of 14 and 10 p.m. for those under the age of 17 would be in effect. Now, what's interesting is, like, how do you enforce this without police? Right. So clearly police are going to be involved in Mm -hmm. a lot of young people's lives. And I would imagine that being in Baltimore, a lot of young black people are going to have interactions with the police you this summer. You know so that they didn't plan on having. So it's just like, man, that, 
Uh, he said, I want everybody to hear me, hear me clearly. We are going back to the old days. We are enforcing the youth curfew as we move into the later spring and summer months. It's not just about making sure we're getting them out the street, but making sure that we are supporting them and figuring out what's going on with them and their families. It's not normal for a person to be that far away from their home and no one knows where they are or cares for them. Um, so, yeah, I, I just it just made me think how, like, even the realities of office – are just different than yes even what you would like for them to be because like a lot of us oh that's me sorry I was about to say I don't think it was me okay, uh, okay. I don't know how uh, oh anyway um a lot, the realities of office are like there's things we say in theory because we don't have to live with the consequences right and so of course I can get on my social media fuck the police we don't need the police mm -hmm. we can do everything ourselves blah 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 but then when kids are fucking shooting each other and nobody knows yeah, like got, where the kids are from where they right. supposed to be you got 200 of them piled up in the area for no, like it's not an event happening you're going what is happening here it's hard to take that kind of pressure and be like guys this is just part of what it is mm -hmm. and we still need to defund the police and you got families and people that are concerned about that shit um it's it's hard to 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 just act like it's not happening or it's not a big deal, right? Because if it's two hundred some teenagers outside of my house, yes, it's going to be a problem. And yes, you're going to want them cleared out. You're not going to want them just to be chilling in your neighborhood. What the fuck you think I want them in mine for? That's a lot of teenagers just roaming. Right. So it's just kind of interesting to see like what happens when you you know when you end up in these situations. Because mm -hmm. I mean. I, I don't live there, so I can't knock right. it. I was looking at the news for DC, like once once again, I didn't save this article, but it was like it was a person that was died by homicide, and then some people shot up the funeral for that person. Mm. You know, it's like this shit is like 80s violence. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is we New Jack City? Like, yeah, rock a bye, baby. <laughs> yeah, like, rock a bye, baby. It's scary, man. Uh, Holly Berry claps back at a troll says she's posting news for attention in menopause. Uh, okay, if that's what she want to do. and uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, is she posting news or are they just saying she posting news? Well, first of all, this so people are going to have other issues with this situation than I do. But my main issue is this, and I'm tired of it. I don't like the Instagram news. By which I mean, okay. we giving people credit for shit that that's not really happening, right? Because I was because like, because when you say nudes, when you say topless, when you say wardrobe malfunction, I'm expecting to see some parts of the body I'm not supposed to see. Some areolas, okay? And I don't like that we give people all this extra credit for shit where it's like this is just a very tastefully shot picture what that is basically you wearing your underwear or a bikini which is just you ain't showing nothing it's fine right it's fine but, but we're giving you nudes. extra credit and we making it seem more salacious than it is it's like right if you've seen holly berry in her workout clothes you've seen this picture i'm gonna show y'all this picture is like it's upsetting me and my homegirls this is not really me ah, you and your homegirls what's happening we're not really seeing nothing. We can see this at any time on her page. Yes, we can. I can't believe people got upset about this, about right. this picture. You she's know, beautiful, right? And that's the other thing. She's so fine. We all know this nigga's stupid. Like whoever it is, mm -hmm. we don't even need to see his picture. You know, he probably like Mr. Potato Head or Gumby or some shit. <laughs> like it's, all, it's the same nigga every time. You blow him. You yeah. blow him. Ash gonna fall off his skin. Yeah, it's all. It's the same nigga every time. Come on. Hairy ass, hairy ass eyebrows, yeah. It's always somebody that nobody is fucking checking for like that anyway. Mm -hmm. Talk about how they they dick ain't getting hard enough for Holly Berry. It's like, okay, dude, we we don't believe you. It's sad that the nagging of her got this person to attention. Um, but yeah, so she um clapped back at this person. I'm trying to see if it's showing uh okay, it's not showing it. Give me one second, I'm gonna pull up the other page but um she she clapped back at this person uh because he said uh let me go get the exact tweet uh, had, I, get, uh I know what nude look like and that ain't nude this guy uh Shadaya Knight I guess is Shadaya 
uh imagine being in your 50s still posting news for attention and menopause when you should be chilling with the grandkids aging with dignity is no longer a thing um and what's funny is they put a link at the end to like once it went viral hey check out this website you know <laughs> like don't check out my website please um but it's okay this dude clearly looks like Willy Wonka's version of Kevin Samuels. You know, you like if, if, if Raphael Sadiq got stuck in the chocolate factory. <laughs> right? Like, it's, I mean, it's, but the point being, like, Holly Berry wasn't sitting there like, oh, God, no. The, the, this nigga don't want me. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no. Farnsworth Bentley cousin ain't gonna fuck with me. Oh, right. oh, shit. Oh, how am I? How, how, how I'm gonna make it? How am I gonna survive? Not me, fifty year old Holly Berry, who could shut down any event with any man ever, and most of the ladies. Come on, she can walk up in any place and just pull whichever person of her choice in in life. That's been her experience, and we sitting around like, mm. uh, but yeah, she wrote. Uh, Did you guys know the heart of a shrimp is located in his head? And that was her reply to it. So, I don't know. I'm not sure who that person was trying to convince mm -hmm. uh, that Holly wasn't fine. But we appreciate you giving us a reason to go peruse her Instagram page. I, mm -hmm. we, we I'm like about to say, that. am I following her on Instagram? Let me be sure I am. You know, we, thanks for keeping us up to date. But yeah, thank you for reminding me if I ain't following her. Let me do it right What a now. weird, what a weird thing. Um, you know, I hate to get those calls that are random and you pick up the phone and it's like, hey, this is Lieutenant such and such from the such and such police. We would like some of your money. I'm like, niggas, you get all the budget as, as is. You know, I don't want to give no extra dollars. And now, mm -hmm. next time y'all shoot a nigga and cover it up, it's partially my fault. I'm good. Right. But you know who hates to get those calls even more than us? Who? The actual police. They be calling each other? Well, apparently, somebody uh, was trying to scam people with the phone call and they you called me Sergeant off. Darren Moss with the Pierce County Sheriff's Office. If this is an emergency, please hang up and dial 911. If it is not an emergency, please leave your name, number, and a brief message and I will get back with you. Thank you. Hey Darren, I am just calling you back because you said that there was something going on. He's Darren Moss for real. <gasps> oh! He's Officer Darren Moss and the person Oh, that's hilarious. The person called him. They were impersonating him. Oh, uh, yeah. That is hilarious. Like, you think we, you think we hate scammers. I guess there's got to be nothing scammier than that. Now, I will say this. I appreciate this story because it gives me a reason to never give to the, now I have a new reason. I already wasn't giving them the money. But now I get to be like, uh, well, it could be a scammer. Oh, yeah. I, psh, child, you know me. I don't be picking up the phone. No way. Mm. Yeah, I don't normally pick it up either. Mm -mm. I'm black and I'm proud. And yes, I'm on them old people to be like, who is this and why is you calling? Yeah. Uh, Let's see what else happened. Oh, somebody is being messy because apparently they done leaked all the United States secret government business on the social media apps okay the online leak of so sco scores of highly classified documents about the ukraine war present a very serious risk to national security and senior leaders are quickly taking steps to mitigate the damage a top pentagon spokesman said monday and as the public airing of the data sends shockwaves across the u.s government the white house said there are concerns that could be there could be additional leaks now what's interesting is like some of the leaks it's not that they're not serious. I'm sure they're very serious, especially if you work in government. Mm -hmm. But some of the leaks are so like, it just sound like gossip. It's like, mm, you know what I heard? I heard that uh, the United States don't really like South Korea the way they be acting like they like them. I heard they be talking shit, girl. Like, it's a lot of that. <laughs> and, and then our coverage of it is like, it's going to be awkward at the G3 summit when Joe Biden has to talk to South Korea it's like a reality show. Oh, yeah, because that's all the people care about. Right, but with governments, like it shouldn't be. 
it's a reality show with governments. You know what I mean? Like, mm, girl, I heard they don't really fuck with Macron, but you ain't heard it from me though. Yeah, life and death and wars and shit. They like, uh, what's on the next station? Man, what what do you hear? What they be really saying about Zelensky when he ain't around? <laughs> Okay, they be acting like they cool and shit in his face, but then I heard when he ain't around, they say his breath stank. Now, how he gonna, how Joe Biden gonna deal with that next week? I'm like, ain't it a war? Should it matter? Did it matter? Uh, but yeah, um, they've had to hold daily me- meetings to assess the damage, set up a group not only to assess the scope of the information loss, but to review who has access to those briefings. Mm-hmm. They're looking closely at how this type of information is distributed and to whom. Oh yeah, it's gonna be more. They're gonna shut shit down. Gonna be more checks and balances. Gonna be more walls. Gonna be more. You need permission, and why do you need this information? And they're gonna start being like, why? They're gonna start tracking who touches it, how often they touch it, what's your reasoning for touching it? You logging in the system, like they trace anyway, but they're gonna start tracing even more. I'm gonna tell you like this: someone going to jail. Yes, they are. And the thing with us is we be all for someone going to jail for this shit. And then you give it a few years for they actually go to trial and shit. And then all of a sudden everybody start folding after they get punished. Because that's the cycle with these whistleblower ass niggas that be fucking up people's uh, the, 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 the like safety and, and shit mm-hmm. overseas. We always start feeling bad eventually and be like, hey, is Eric Snowden in that band? I'm like, yes, nigga, he yes, is. He put his lives in danger. I'm going to keep the same energy. Just letting y'all know. So when the when the shit starts breaking down and it's like, you know, reality winner or whatever the fuck, I'm not going to be like, well, you know, she's just a little white girl that just, no, man, you got to deal with the consequences. You can't be doing this shit. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But right now, everybody's covering it like it's catty. You know, mm-hmm. uh, all right, let's see. Um, Florida bill seeks to prohibit discussions of periods by young girls in schools. Florida Republicans are pushing a series of bills on gender diversity that are set to become law, including a sexual health bill proposed by Stan McClain, GLP lawmaker. The bill will prohibit girls from discussing their menstrual cycles in school, prompting criticism from feminist advocates. During a hearing, state rep Ashley Grant questioned McLean on whether the proposed legislation would prohibit young girls from discussing their peers in school, to which he responded that it would. McLean later clarified that his bill would not intend to punish girls who approach teachers with questions about their menstrual cycle. Despite the blowback from critics, including the Florida Alliance of Planned Parenthood affiliates, Mc- shit, <laughs> more like in not despite, but in spite. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, McLean's bill passed on a party line vote um so yeah this is also a cost of I, this is what karen always talks about you oh what you always talk about where it's like people come for trans people people come for lgbtq people and then the ways that it affects cisgendered people seems to be this thing that either gets put on the back burner or people just kind of think won't it won't come to that and it always is going to end up coming to that if you're marginalized within any way the the, the the majority rule, the the power, possession is not a tenth of the law type of power that the Republicans wield, they don't stop at, oh, let's stop at this 2% of the population. They keep it going for as much as they can get get away with. Right, because the, the, the thing is, I, they want to eradicate anything that's not like them. Anything that's not like them. Even their own women. They want to eradicate. They want to control everything thing around them that is the whole purpose of white supremacy it's white first everything else second actually white man first white woman get a little trickle of it Mm -hmm. but she can still be a victim of it Mm -hmm. and everybody else oh lord forbid if you're not white you you, you, you're part of the problem too it all goes downhill from there and it's not going to stop that's why you need to fight for all people's rights, everybody's rights. Even if you don't think it matters, fight for their rights because that's that the individualism I was telling you about before. Everybody's individualized. Black people, white people, Asian people, everybody's doing their own thing. Nobody ever really thinks about and and, and you talk to people particularly. Everybody want to have a fucking oppression Olympics. Well, bitch, we all being oppressed. Don't we have that in common? Ain't we all being oppressed? It don't matter how oppressed your oppression is. We all being pushed down. 
but you can't, it's very hard to get people to, to get out their own biases and get out their own feelings about how the white man has done them worse than the white man has done somebody else. Well, the common factor is the white man. Let's look at his ass, but everybody won't look at these other factors. And it's very, very frustrating when you look at this because when you talk about elementary school, girls and people who have periods have their periods in elementary school. I got my period at fucking nine years old. I was in fucking elementary school. What are we talking about here, people? Right. I agree. Uh, But you know what? Not everybody oppression is the same, Karen. There are different degrees of oppression. And we had a slew of people that wanted to be oppressed uh, before the pandemic. And I feel like the earth is healing. We're getting our recipes back. Because Muslim activist Raquel Saraswati allegedly lied about being South Asian, Arab, and Latin. Her mother says she's white as the driven snow. Okay? Not as the driven snow? We back, baby. (laughs) We are back. <laughs> we love to see it. This is the kind of we mess. Back to, we make our own oppressions. This is the kind of mess we've been covering, okay? We love to see a white woman try to slide up in the party with some with some um Dolazal, okay? Um <laughs> now they even put in the article her picture next to Dolazal. Like, look at these two white women. You love to see it. Okay. Um <laughs> the earth is healing apparently. It is. I, I listen. I don't know. It's it's like do the white women like do they just go to the beach for a weekend, get back, look in the mirror, realize they got like a a, a slight tan, and they be like, you know what? I'm gonna ride this out. You know, I might I could get away with this. I can't go full black, but I could I could say something. I could say I'm South Asian, Arab, and Latin up in this bitch, okay? I'm gonna be <laughs> yeah. And then, you come and in then, my house, I'm gonna have some non bread, some taco. I'm gonna make non bread tacos <laughs> with a <laughs> little bit of curry. It's gonna be a fusion up in this bitch because <laughs> I'm because I'm brown today. Oh boy! And then, and then you have black women that look just like her going, but bitch, I'm really black. Like I'm black. The fuck I know. is this? I know. You wonder this. This is the part, and you know, because they like, like the people that this would happen to would be light skinned, they can't really complain too much on social media because, you know, then the colorism argument gonna start and people gonna be like, you know, I was a slave and your ass is mad because Rachel Dole is out, you know, so you can't even say nothing. Uh, but yeah, um, she uh, apparently uh, in February, uh, right, Raquel, Raquel. Evita Saraswati, a Muslim activist, was exposed for posing as a woman of color. The Intercept reported Saraswati claimed to be of Arab, South Asian, and Latin descent and was the chief equity, inclusion, and culture officer of the American Friends Service Committee, a peace and social justice organization. They be getting them high positions too, boy. First of all, we covered this on the show already. Most of those officer positions went to white people in the first place. They didn't go to black people, put it that way. But secondly, this means the number might even be lower than we thought because some of these people they was counting as brown were secret white women. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we don't even know what the real number is. If you want, you add the secret white women in there. But according to her friends and family, she was born Rachel Elizabeth Seidel. Oh, they always switch the name up too. So Raquel Evita Saraswati, because you see how she tried to make sure she got all the. All the races up in her Raquel Evita Saraswati did her real name, Rachel Elizabeth Seidel. Girl, you are white, salt and pepper to taste. Okay. You you know you boil yo your eggs. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you know your potato salad is white and not yellow. Come on now. I'm as white as the driven snow, and so is she, her mother told the intercept. That's the other thing. The moms, the parents be fed up. Yeah. The yeah. parents be the parents fed up. The parents is like, why is you ashamed of your race? Yeah. The parent, the parents, when they, when, whenever the news interview the parents, because those are our parents is like this too. When they interviewed her, they was like, hey, uh-uh. Nope. No, we not. They no, got not. tired of that. They was like, we ain't going to go through this no more. We tired of our friends looking at us like we crazy, knowing you a whole ass white child. She a full ass white girl. We raised a full white. She, we don't know what happened. <laughs> we don't know. This ain't on us, y'all. This ain't on us. And then here's the thing. 
they don't just be brown. They got to over overachieve. That's how you know they white. Because mm-hmm. they they be accomplished as fuck. That's how you know they white. Accomplished without the struggle. Just just showing up. It's like, well, what does this fake white woman do? They never be a fake white woman working at low. Just an average fake white woman. That's what I'm saying. They never be a fake white woman. It's just like, what do you do? Oh, I work at Winn Dixie. I stock shelves. Oh, okay. No, it'd be like I'm the head chief of diversity and inclusion <laughs> at the <laughs> University yes! of. It's like, damn. <laughs> she landed the prominent diversity position at the AFSC because it seemed that there was an element of lived experience and understanding of lived experience of a queer Muslim multi-ethnic woman, a human resource professional involved in her hiring told the Intercept. Yeah, now she got three with two, three groups of people mad at her now going, the fuck is this? Yeah. And then like who knows what her interview was like. Cause see, this is the issue with social media. It's not our, it's no one can change. It's not our fault. There's no way to go back. But because so many people have told our business professionally, mm-hmm. there's so many black TM people that you know they they their content is talking about blackness. Mm-hmm. But it's also extremely easy to co-op, learn, and copy. Yes, it is. You know, most of the movements uh, online, I'm a bit skeptical of a lot of the movements because some of them adopt so much directly from black movements that it's like, even when it don't line up, they try to pretend like it does. It's like, that's not the same. Nope. Like, yeah, I hear what you're trying to say, but that's not the, it's like when you seen people marching after that Asian officer shot a black kid and had got sentenced for it. And Asian people were marching, but they were marching for his right to shoot a black kid and get away. Right. We're not marching for the same thing. Like, what your solidarity, not my solidarity, dog. <laughs> like, like those, those are two very different conclusions we're arriving at. Just because you marching down the same street don't mean we marching for the same shit. Right. And I think that's that's what happens. But because a lot of this stuff is like the language and the you know, as they call it, internet speak, when it's just black slang and shit. A lot of this stuff is a is co-opted so yeah it makes sense that people will be able to ride that co-opting to prestigious situations i mean these secret white women we was covering were all like professors authors mm-hmm. activists mm-hmm. like they because that's they the other thing circles an activist is just like a stand-up comedian you really don't have to have credentials to be one no you don't you get on that stage you a stand-up comedian you could be shitty at open mics or you could be fucking Selling out Madison Square Garden, stand up comedian, go in your bio either way. And the same thing is for activists. Um, anyway, so she uh apparently they said they pushed a members published an anonymous letter on February 10th raising concerns about her background and how her alleged misrepresentations hurt marginalized people. First of all, anonymous. Mm-mm, somebody found that shit out. No, 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 no. They published an anonymous letter. Uh, to to say okay. hey we don't like this hey man I'll put my name on it me too I'll put my name on that shit y'all saw put y'all name on that shit don't, let her feel that energy when she walk in the room and be like yes we the people that don't like what you doing like she's still getting to walk in the room and be like well it's anonymous so if y'all don't want to put your chest behind it I'm not going to anyway uh let's talk about the diversity meeting it's like yes I said it and it is a problem because right. Somebody who quote unquote really had the lived experience needs to be here. You haven't lived it. What the fuck are you talking about? And why is you here? There have been attempts to since 2015 to call for accountability in light of her cultural vulturism. The letter read 2015, she just resigned Tuesday. Ooh. Or whatever, like a couple weeks ago. So so this woman was skating for 20. This is why you gotta put your name on things. This this is why you gotta let her know it's you. Cause she she out here apparently. Yeah, she out here doing the white woman. A white woman is going. You ain't talking about me. <laughs> it really is crazy how people be faking race. Anyway, um, but yeah, and then they go into the history of a bunch of people faking race and shit. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, I just thought that was such a wild story. But it means the earth is healing. Apparently, it is. You know, we we really love to see it. Honestly, um, let's go. You know, <laughs> let's fucking get back. Let's get out here. And get <laughs> kids are shooting each other. The the mass shooting is back up. Uh, you know the the kids gotta have curfew. Colombian crack is back. 
<laughs> Colombian crack. Who would have thought that? The fake women of color is being the the white women being exposed. I mean, shit, man. How y'all not? Ooh, just feel so good, you know, to to be back. Um, all right, let's get into a different segment. Let's do some uh fucking with black people. Oh, fuck with black people. We go around the globe, find different articles, make us feel fuck with. Sign point scores of zero to 100, intervals of 25. Today's contestants, everybody. My mom's favorite segment, everybody. Uh, uh, U.S. black people, wait, U.S. black couple. I, I almost read that wrong because I was going to say us black couple. <laughs> I was like, uh, us? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right? A U.S. black couple settles lawsuit over whitewashed home valuation. A U.S. black couple has settled a lawsuit with a real estate appraiser whom they accused of giving their home a low valuation because of their race. Tanisha Tate Austin and Paul Austin's house was valued in 2020 at nearly a million dollars, much less than expected. They asked for an appraisal with another firm, this time with a white friend posing as a California homeowner, and it was valued at $1.5 million. According to official figures, 92.4% of home appraisers are white. Goddamn. In 2021, the Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation released a study of 12 million appraisers over five years, showing that homes in black and Hispanic neighborhoods were routinely undervalued. Mm -hmm. This is that thing, man. Like, And I, I'll, I'll knock anybody. Please do not take this personal. But a lot of times we like present shit as like a way out of racism. One of the big ones is like owning property and homes and stuff. And it's always like, you know, crossover ain't nothing but a double cross. It just don't never work the right way for us. It doesn't mean it can't work at all. It doesn't mean that it's not smart to own a home or something like that. But a lot of times the shit that are supposed to be inalienable rights that are supposed to be equalizing factors in our society are not for black people. Right. You know, same thing with gun ownership, a bunch of stuff where it's just like, this is what it should be. And it's like, but it never is, is it? No, it never is. And, uh, you know, that's a tactic that a lot of, uh, I've seen a lot of black people increasingly over the years been doing. They literally will take out everything in their home that recognize they even will live somewhere else, mm -hmm. put all that shit in storage, redo their shit, you know, and a lot of times where it is now, a lot of them were like, I don't even want to meet the people. Y'all do everything. Like, mm -hmm. hire somebody white to sell everything. And they was like, nope. And everything go through so they can get their money. Because I was like, y'all not going to cheat me just because you think a nigga done lived here. And it's fucking ridiculous that it's that way. Right. The city has a large African-American population, 38%. 38%. So you talking about a good portion of the home market it's going to just be black people's homes that they've lived in. I, I can't imagine being that fuck. First of all, I can't even imagine being that kind of racist. Like, I can't imagine being like, wait, what kind of people lived here? <laughs> I don't think so. Like, yeah, they said they get lower offers and everything. That's what I'm saying. Like, I can't even imagine. Like, that is so ridiculous to me. You're If you're moving into a home that's not brand new, someone lived there before you. Right. And and it definitely don't work the other way. Like you can't be black and be like white people lived here. Oh, I'm gonna need to lower my offer to six hundred thousand. I'm sorry. I just uh, I I thought I was moving into a black owned previously home. I, I don't know about this. Um, in 2020, when interest rates were historically low, the couple decided to refinance their mortgage. The year before, a company had appraised a four bedroom property for one million four hundred fifty thousand after they made major improvements, including adding square footage. But when they decided to refinance in 2020 to take advantage of low rates, they were appraised for just a million dollars. What? So then they we lost money. So then they got a white woman to pose as the homeowner and they got it back up to 1.4 million. And then they sued. Right, because now we have evidence that shows that the difference was the color of the skin. Yep, zero to hundred. 
oh, this gets a Jakara. Shit like this makes me mad. And this right. one of those things where, and I understand home ownership and all this stuff, but this is one of those things where, you know, for a lot of people, they was like, the fuck I'm going to buy a home for it. This is not guaranteed wealth. This is not guaranteed that it's going to benefit me. It's just not. You know, I, I, and I understand that there are people that are pro home ownership and there's nothing wrong with that if you choose that way for you. But it's not guaranteed that for everybody. Yeah, I don't like it because I'm just imagining when they're selling the home and you know how you have to walk around the home. And they must have been walking around like opening up the cabinets like. Mm, that smells like Lowry's. I think we're gonna have to come off of the price, Helen. <laughs> I smell like shea butter. I don't. Mm, I'm looking in these. I'm looking in the sink. I see a curly hair. Hmm. What could that mean? Mm. Sounds like the offer needs to come down a little bit more. These walls feel like they have felt the rockings of bebops and fuck the police. No, mm. we're gonna have to drop drop the rates. Nope, can't do it. Mm. Can't uh, do yeah, it. I give her your cars as well. TCU becomes the first HBCU to win a national title at the College National Cheerleading Championship. Let's go. Uh, cheerleaders from Texas Southern University made uh, – oh, TSU. I said TCU. My bad. Texas Southern University made history this past weekend when they became the first team from an HBCU to win the College National Championship of the National Cheerleaders Association. The Tigers, who were competing in the Division One of the Cheer Spirit Rally – Started the preliminary round with a performance of 94.05, a raw score of 94.3, and performance score of 23.5125. Numbers, I don't know what they mean. You know, I don't watch these events, mm -hmm. but I do love to see black people succeed. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad. Zero and, to 100. Uh, it still gets 100 because how long they've probably been doing this championship for hundreds of years this is the first time that a, 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 a HBCU has ever won it. Word, word, like niggas ain't been chill eating, chill eating, since chill eating. Right. Yeah. I don't know if it's hundreds of years, but it's been a, whatever a long, it is, it's a long time. It's definitely been a long time for this to be a first. Right. Um. Here's, here's some videos of them. Uh, this is after they won. On the big ass trophy down at the beach. I don't see nothing moving. Oh, really? I see, see the it. little commercial on the side, but I don't see the clips hmm. moving. Oh, okay. Uh, this, it does this. It does this. Hold on. This is a new thing. Hold on. So if I share something, it's got to be the Twitter screen. There. Okay. So now y'all should be able to see it. Um, there you go. <laughs> That's them celebrating going out to the beach. Mm -hmm. Make us smaller. Huh? Make us smaller. Make her smaller. Us smaller. Us small. Yeah, because you got us. Happening? You got us blown up and the picture small on the side. Okay. I, I don't I can't so there I, you go. I can't see my screen at the same time that I show y'all this stuff. That's uh, why I don't know. Okay. Uh okay. But uh this is them when they won. Ladies and gentlemen, your national kid. Yeah, that's dope, man. You know, I, I am happy. Congrats to them. Yes, I am happy and I am excited and I wish them the best. Uh, my pro the only problem that I have is whenever we win shit, racism and racism. So I could see them coming around, changing rules, changing regulations, making it harder, just mm -hmm. doing some fuck bullshit. Whatever it is that they did, they going to find a way to skirt around and make it a reason why they're going to nick points. You know, because mm -hmm. for some reason, when we show up with black excellence, all of a sudden, like Tiger Woods, all of a sudden, they quote unquote, we had to tiger proof the court. We got to make it harder. We got to up the states like, but we all are even right. We just have to be better than them bitches. But now, since we better than them bitches, uh, now the rules change. I hope they keep the shits the same and don't be tic tac and taking off points and shit just because. All right. Yeah, I feel you. I, uh, that's, that's, I'm that's going to enjoy. Huh? That's the biggest reason why I get 100. Just racist. Okay. I'm going to give it a zero. I'm going to enjoy this while it lasts. Uh, props to those girls. Props mm -hmm. to the cheerleading team uh, as a unit. i um, glad they made history. Um, and I, I And I do hope for their continued success the same way. But uh, today is a good day. It is. And I don't feel fucked with. 
Um, Georgia football coach apparently um, uh, had a tape that he leaked of his own, I believe. Um, oh shit! And yeah, and the, and the people was was not feeling it. Here's the tape. It's a racist video of Mark Taylor of Warner Robins, Warner Vegas, commenting about black people in the city of Atlanta, UGA, hashtag, okay, a bunch of stuff. Downtown Atlanta, row. Coming up here, and just got a conference with the legislature, real estate thing and all, and uh, downtown Atlanta, staying here at the uh, Omni Hotel over by the CNN. I ain't seen a white person in sight. Homeless ones on the street. Every restaurant looking in here is black. Every car beside them is black. They can have Atlanta. That, it now, you know, up until this point, I got to say, not really that offended. I agree. Like, uh, <laughs> it's niggas everywhere. Okay. I've been to Atlanta myself, and uh, you don't see a lot of white people, and, and black people can have Atlanta, and, and we do have Atlanta. And, and so, okay. 30 seconds in. Yeah, they're trying to gentrify it, though. Trust. 30 seconds in, though, you know, I, 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 I kind of, we kind of on the same shit. It used to be a fun place to come to up here. Uh oh. They can have this place right here. And stuff. Yeah, ain't no way. They ain't no way. Just need to. There, there, there's your. Yeah, well, it, was a, it was just a sign up there. It had Obama and all them on there. Mm, no, Obama is a trigger point. You know, Obama is a trigger point. Whenever white people don't like Obama, I, I start looking sideways because it's always, it means something. Nigga was the most milk toast, acceptable, black, excellent nigga of all time. He, he was. He was giving y'all a lot of a lot of slack. He was being very nice. He was the first. He was on that Jackie Robinson shit. He wasn't trying to wait, start no shit with y'all. He, he did everything to bend over backwards. And you don't like this nigga? Mmm. Mmm. That stuff, man. So, yeah, that's all that's up here. That's all that's up here, man. And stuff is just crap. Yeah. Yeah, you and Borf need to come up here and go hunting. Yeah. Hunting? In Atlanta? Who need to go hunting? I don't know who he's talking about, who he's talking to on the phone, but I'm saying, what kind of hunting? We clearly not talking about animals. Not right. He been talking about black people the whole time. You and Borf need to come up here and go hunting. Yeah. That stuff, man. Ain't nothing here, dog. Ain't nothing but blacks up here. First of all, you saying dog, that's our thing. Even racist people be stealing our shit. Mm -hmm. Listen, my dog, these <laughs> niggers gotta go. <laughs> Cause we cool. <laughs> listen, listen, gang. Uh these, <laughs> these listen, 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 hear my waldies. Listen, Waldy, these motherfucking blacks are on my last goddamn nerve. Okay. No cap. <laughs> Now y'all listen, y'all need to come up here because you know they got the ops out here and you know what I'm saying y'all gotta get the busing. All it is, Atlanta's done gone down, man. Just gone. Bro, look at this nigga trying to pull out in front of me right here. Oh, 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 it got worse. Oh, it got worse. I thought that was already bad. He really called this black woman. Well, she didn't hear, but he called her the N-word. Yeah, he got his windows rolled up. Yeah, yeah, he's saying it inside with his quiet voice. Come on! Look at this nigger trying to... Nah, nah, nah. Look at this nigger trying to pull out in front of me right here. Look at this nigger trying to pull out in front of me right I'm here. in her business. Right. Hey, did you see Did you see that that tree right there? Yeah. Did you see that tree right there? Roll with a hang... Oh, he's going to say something about lynching. Well, hang you from that tree. Yeah. Okay. Now I just want to hear what he sound like when he be recruiting. Because if he's a coach, uh, so this is a coach. He's a football trainer in Georgia, uh, and a coach is is what he sound like when he recruiting. Do he sound like this when he in your house and they asking for your kid to come? I'm gonna treat him just like they my own son. You know that shit? Because you it's no way he's a football coach and doesn't have interactions with black people. Right. It's no, it's impossible. So clearly this motherfucker be saying this shit uh privately, but not at his profession. This is this is his his actual picture. 
what he looked like. Um, damn, man, that's that's yeah, and, oof, uh, and that's bad. And you know the way it is now with the portal and shit, possibly cost them recruits. Like it ain't like it used to be. Yeah, I don't know where he coaches at though, because like I don't. It says Atlanta trainer. He has a Georgia helmet, but I don't know that that means he oh, coaches at Georgia. Okay. Um, you know, so I don't know where exactly, you know, what the repercussions would be. Um, you know, the fact that he looked at this racism is so crazy. The fact that he looked at this beautiful black woman was like, that's a nigger trying to pull out in front of me as if that. Woo. Woo. Yeah. And that's why I tell people that, you know, people, when it comes to it is white and other. I know people like to do the nuances and like to no, that's not the way they look at it. You either white or you're not. Yeah, he's a high school coach, according to this, to social media. Um, but yeah, he, he started he, he has more than one video, apparently. What? Yeah, I didn't, yeah, it's, this is crazy. He's trying to be all on the summer jam screen. And he was old school racist, like he talking about hanging people. Uh, Mark's uh, to everyone's utter surprise. Mark's next call, next call room service, and addressed them with the N word, asking them to bring him some chicken wings and two prostitutes. He disturbingly demanded that one of the prostitutes be a white girl and the other one be a red bone. Who, who, oh, see, see, that's not the red bone. You know who was a red bone? That girl that was at the light. She sure was. They, they hate what they love. White people crazy, man. Mm -hmm. Racism is irrational and illogical. I will continue to say that. I don't, man. I knew a dude that like was deep in like hip hop and like quote and like he loved black culture, but it felt like a fetishization to me. But he was like a rapper and all this stuff. And I remember like his politics though, being like he's like he loved Ronald Reagan and shit. And I'll be like, how the fuck? Can you even claim to love our culture and don't know that Ronald Reagan's a goddamn devil? And that doesn't you never gonna find a, any nigga that love him. Nope. That 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 people really My whole fuck with. Family like that. was like, fuck that nigga. Yeah. Like you're not gonna find people that you're not gonna find a lot of black people like that. I'm sure there's some, but you're not gonna find a lot. Mm -mm. This is crazy. Anyway. Uh zero to hundred. Oh, that gets a Jakaris, and you know, uh, people like this is not trying to be funny. Why I tell people to get your ass out there, motherfucking boat, and all that shit because these are the people that are in places of authority. Well, I don't know there is a voting situation for him, though. I mean, not a voting situation for him, yeah. but my thing is, people like him exist mm -hmm. and they're not going to change. So, you have to put pl people in places going to make laws for people like him. And people around him, like he might not go do it, but somebody else who we talking to might go do it. And I don't want to be a victim of some shit and not have any consequences or repercussions because the right people are in office to implement laws to protect me. Yeah, I think George, you don't have to worry about that in Atlanta, but yeah, maybe the state of Georgia. Uh, he also was found guilty of stalking a woman in 2007. He was sentenced to probation in 2009. He was convicted of making harassing phone calls to his ex-wife who filed a domestic violence case against him. He was previously on probation for interfering with witnesses by intimidating his former fiance. All these convictions caused one of his probation to be revoked, and he was sent to prison and later released in 2012. In 2016, his probation was partially lifted by Judge George Nunn, which was fulfilled in 2017. <clears throat> so he's also a criminal. He's where he's he's talking about the town going to niggers and 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 not seeing enough white people. And this motherfucker is a whole ass criminal. Anyway, uh, I give him a Dracars because I just think about the fact that he works in a sport where there's no, there's zero percent chance he doesn't come into contact with black people every day, and this is how he really feels. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And so, you know, if I'm a player or a current player, I'm looking like, hey, doll, I don't want him in here. Like, I would yeah. go demand that. Like, the fuck is he doing here? I'm a nigga to him. No, I refuse to participate and play. What the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah. If he still has a job, that's insane. Last one: the black culture platforms that push right wing extremism. The shave room and no jumper are ostensibly designed to reach black audiences, and both have become hubs of extremist disinformation. This is from Jahan Jones at MSNBC. Uh, but yeah, it goes on to talk about how um, 
Media Matters, the progressive media watchdog, published a report last month about the hip hop and black culture podcast, No Jumper, and its creator, Adam22. Now, we play clips from No Jumper mm-hmm. on Ballsy Sports. And it's, I, I don't follow the whole thing. I didn't even know this stuff. This is all news to me. I only would see like when he would have like NBA groupies on and they'd be like, right. you know, Odell Beckham shot on my chest or whatever the fuck. But this one apparently, um, in his other podcasts and stuff I haven't seen, he talks about um, gang culture usually involving black youth, misogyny through crass interviews and coverage. Uh, he's apparently uh, made a more explicitly racist turn over the past year. No Jumper has delved into platforming viral hate figures, including white nationalists, neo-Nazis, misogynists, and notorious anti-Semites. The show has a massive reach on social media with over 4.5 million YouTube subscribers, 1.2 million Twitter followers, 3 million Instagram followers, and 2.1 TikTok, million TikTok followers. Oof. Clips from the podcast are also available on Snapchat, and the show has a large Discord following. Additionally, clips of viral hate figures appearances on the show have been posted on TikTok by various users. The Grand Mason, uh, who is the, the white dude, Adam, who is white, now invites white supremacists and racists onto the show that has many black staff members and was born out of covering hip hop and black culture. This transitional period for the podcast comes at a time when Grand Mason faces criticism for report of past, reports of past predatory behavior. Yeah, he's been accused of like uh, grooming underage girls and all this other shit. Oh no! Um, what what I find interesting about this is his show is very successful. The people that are in competition with him are people that like Charlemagne, Joe Budden, mm-hmm. uh, Nori. You know the drink champs, and I've been seeing this trend where like Nori t- had a picture of him and Tucker Carlson. And like they were chummy pals and talk, had a caption that was like, how come only one of us gets hate or something like that? Or some, you know, some shit like that, trying to make it look like y'all don't, y'all be taking it easy on Tucker Carlson, but not me. He also had a tweet where he said uh, something about, should I have Andrew Tate on the podcast? Right. Um, And what it makes me think about is just the fact that the structure of, how podcasting is set up and how people make money mm-hmm. being so much attention driven, not necessarily yeah. integrity, moral it's content driven, of yeah. you know, like got numbers, the easiest way, like what's, what's harder for Nori and Charlemagne and them to actually like read a book and then have somebody on and talk about it. People don't really want to hear that. Mm-mm. But if you pile around with like, a, you know, a, 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 a one of these, like, Proud Bros or something like that, like all of a sudden it's like, well, um, people will click on that. Like it might not be good content, it might not be d- deep, it might not be funny, nuanced, any of that, but it is like people like a fight. People like mm-hmm. if they don't like a fight, they like two people sitting around that are supposed to not be on the same side, and and just even if they're just patting on themselves on the back, like we're having a conversation, you know. Um it's a, it's so it, I just find it interesting. I think it is there's something to it because like a lot of the blogs, Shade Room, um, even Ball Alert, like a lot of these places, they do traffic in a lot of right wing stuff. Like it's a lot of like transphobic shit, or you know, posting a picture of Zia Wade and then not leaving a caption or comment, but letting the comments be completely fucked up. Okay. And not turning them off on purpose. Like they yes, know what they're purpose, doing. Because it goes viral. Yeah. Like, oh, here's another little boosie video. Uh, you know, like so, like the con because the content is the content. They're gonna right. get the clicks off the content. Mm-hmm. You know, this I I guess being on the side of things, you just see the game, right? You like, you know, um, like like here's like here's one that's kind of harmless and fun, right? I love for all nerds. When a new trailer drops from Marvel, they post a trailer to their account. Right, it's it's is for them. You're gonna get more clicks off of posting the trailer to your account than just like sending a link from Marvel, which gives Marvel the clicks and Marvel the comments. But I'm trying to siphon off for my brand, right? So I'm gonna put, hey, what do y'all think about this? And then we go have a community and a conversation over in that comments. Correct. Well, imagine if a motherfucker, because that's just Marvel. We all love that. That's harmless. But if a motherfucker was like, mm, we can get a clip of us talking to. Um, you know, somebody from the Boogaloo Boys, 
and they're saying racist shit, and I'm just sitting there going, mm-hmm, oh, man, that's crazy. That'll go viral. That's just, that's that's a moral choice. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's not just a movie trailer. That's you making the decision. And like, I want the clicks that come with Tucker Carlson. You know, uh, we seen it when Charlemagne had Tommy Lauren. Uh, I don't even know it. Tommy Lauren. When he had Tommy Lauren on his show, and it was like, and they took a picture together, and it was like a big troll moment of like, ooh, and then people go check it out, or people spread the clips, or people get upset. So all I'm saying is this. A lot of the right wing stuff, I don't even know if these people believe it. I don't even know if it matters if they believe it. But they're in competition with no jumper. Yes, they are so, all trying to cipher off of some of the same audience. So Nori right? didn't see, like, no, I don't think Nori sees it and goes, Man, this nigga spitting. I gotta get this dude on my show. I think he says they got how many views? Mm-hmm. Okay, go get me Andrew Tate. I want to get six million views on my next video. Because at the end of the day, they don't really have a moral compass or give a fuck about the community in that way. They want the credit for giving a fuck, but they don't really give a fuck. Because if you really gave a fuck, you'd be like, I'm not putting this person on my platform in no way, shape, or form because I'm that's that's disgusting. I would not, I don't want to sit down with this person. But when you chasing the numbers, you'll sit down with anybody. Yeah, because because like I said, it, it's about numbers and it's about catching them all. And there are some people's who job and some people do it really, really well of catching them all. But when you catch them all, all the I'm not trying to find it, you have to lower the quality when you catch them all. <laughs> because catching them all, you you know, you have to talk on a, a more common denominator. And for a lot of people, they won't even admit it to themselves. A lot of people really love, and I'm I mean, I do to an extent, but you know. They really love very stupid, very ignorant, very we're not trying to challenge your brain and your thought process type of shit. A lot of times that's how you catch them all. Yeah, it's I mean, it's just I don't think I think it's the competitive nature that turns it into this because this is Mm -hmm. what sells in America. But like also, I wouldn't be surprised if your favorite blogs are getting checks from some like. You know, like there's times where I read an article on a black blog and if you like and like so I'll copy and paste the headline into Google to, to make sure it's verified because sometimes motherfuckers be just talking and sometimes it be actual news. Right. And one of the things I keep finding is those headlines in a lot of cases will take you straight up into uh, like the daily news or um, the uh, like a right wing kind of like rag. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The Daily Mail, mm-hmm. uh, the New York Post. And it's like, oh, that's where they get it from. This is, well, not that's where they get it from, but this is a direct, like, there's a relationship. They're not posting that shit for free. Mm-mm. Like, there's some sort of affiliation of like, this is another way to disseminate the New York Post, but make it seem like it's not right wing. It's right. now it's a black, now, now it's on a black blog. And most of us would never think to click on it and go, let me search and see who else is talking about this. Oh, the only other people really talking about this are all right wing blogs. Right. And we can get caught up in that shit, too. You know, a lot of, you know, people like to just say that's the uh, quote unquote, the other side. But now we can get caught up and swept in it, too. Uh, and it's one of those things we can fall for the conspiracies, too. Just as bad and just as hard. And I'm not a hardcore person in like like I'll click on a Daily Mail link or read a new. But you got to read the shit and you got to know the source and know where it's coming from. And honestly, I just suggest that shit with everybody. Like, um, unless it's like a mainstream news site, I, you know, all this shit is a little bit. Everybody got some agenda that promoted. I, I remember I used to read. Um, I stopped covering. God, now I can't remember because I stopped using their articles. But y'all, those who are familiar with the news articles will recognize what I'm talking about. But it will always be a clip where it's like they will always cover like the news. I want to say it's like media or something, but they will always cover the news. It's not media takeout. And they will always be like, it will be just like a clip from the Daily Show. And it'd be like, John Stewart lobotomizes Mitch McConnell or whatever. And you're like, I cannot, I know what? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And you like, what? That like you play the clip and it can never live up to the headline because the 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 clip is like, you know. <laughs> you know the clip is Trevor Noah assassinates uh Rush Limbaugh <laughs> on live television. And you click on it, it's just like Trevor Noah being really smart and saying smart stuff. 
and Rush Limbaugh mostly just not saying anything, and then it's just like, okay, well, uh, that was that was weird. And then false you, advertisement. And I realized, like, you know what? They got me. I clicked. They got you. I clicked. I hit play to go see. Um, and I think that's that's what's happened. Raw story. Thank you, Greg. I think it was raw story. Oh no, media I carry you right, Greg. Your points are being rescinded. But, um, <laughs> Media, I I had to stop covering articles on media because it would just feel like false advertising. It was always over promising because their bias was to liberal people like me to get me to click on it, and I would click on it because I'm like, oh, somebody dunked on Trump, and then you click on it, you're like they didn't really dunk on him at all. That he just they just talked for five seconds, and you called it a dunk. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, all that to say, man. Um, yeah, these I'm not surprised at all. I think it's a I would not be shocked to find out that it's money behind this shit. Like straight up. Cause I've seen some of these places pedal like vaccine, anti-vax shit. I've seen them kind of flirt with, you know, uh transphobia and homophobia and all this stuff. You know, it's a very amoral game for a lot of people that that even though they sell blackness and they're up and they use their blackness bona fides to uh to make money it don't necessarily mean they care about black people more than they care about they check like i'm not right. saying, i'm not saying this is the same as like a candace owens or something where mm -hmm. they literally their whole claim to fame is like i'm a I, i'm a black person that's a white supremacist i don't think it's the same but it ain't that far off like one of the things i realized about like the brilliant idiots because I, I never could listen to it because I just thought Andrew Schultz was was bullshit and I thought he was racist and him palling around with Charlemagne never made me feel like it was okay. You know? Um and I'm and I'm only using their names as an example because I, I I people can either understand what I'm talking about or not. But I always felt like, yeah, Andrew Schultz is the problem on that show. That's what I would think. But then, you know, doing this for a living, doing this for a long time, I'm like, he wasn't the problem. Andrew Schultz is the target audience. Yes. They want a bunch of Andrew Schultz's listening because that's how you get no jumper to get that many millions. That's not black people making it that many millions. Mm -hmm. That's not all black people, all black dudes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot it's of like white people. Sponsorships and all that stuff. Yeah, because yeah. uh, trust us, we know to get those numbers, mm -hmm. you have to cross over. And there's a lot of white people. And those white people are racist, but like hip hop, like Andrew. And yep. so they go, they, you know, they're, they're the ones that are going to laugh at the me too stories and stories of rape and shit. They're, those are those people. And it's not a coincidence that he's on that platform. It's not a coincidence that they want Andrew Tate to come on to, you know, um, drink champs. There's not a, even if he never comes on, it's not a coincidence that that's your thinking because for a lot of people that's unconscionable, but here you go. Zero to a hundred. I forgot who's initially talking about. Sorry. Oh, okay, never mind then. Uh, black blogs being used as right wing propaganda. Uh, okay, because we started going going off on, going off on some other stuff. Um, I would give this a one hundred, and the biggest reason why is because a lot of it is, is trickery, and a lot of times you don't care about the community, um, or you care, but you care as far as your paycheck goes. And the second something else comes or another trend comes along or something else pays better, you'll leave that and go on to that too. It's like you, you're following the money. And so that matters to me. Yeah, I give it a, a Dracarys, man. It's because it's just, if you say the name of those places, most people think of them as places within our culture. And it's it's sad that that can be used uh, as cover for them sliding in obviously overtly conservative right-wing bullshit mm -hmm. um all right that's it for fucking with black people let's do some guest race it's time to guess the 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 race all right, guess the race time. We go around the globe, find different articles, guess the race of the people involved. Karen plays along. Today's contestants, everybody. I mean, Karen and the chat room. They racist. <laughs> uh, she loves when I make a mistake. 
<laughs> no joke I've ever written made the last hour. All right, guys, let's go to the first article. A YouTuber is hospitalized after being shot during a prank video. Now, what I don't understand is how I'm charged with a felony. Right? If, if this gives me a motherfucking 100, that's about as bad as when that. Uh, oh, 100. We playing guess the race, but okay. No, uh, no, they didn't hear anything, baby. No sound. Oh, these niggas didn't hear anything? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. This mm -hmm. is. Oh, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> All right, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's only 30 seconds. Just let me go to a different. Uh, browser y'all let me know if y'all can hear me no problem uh so it's like it works sometimes some days and some days it don't um all right um trying to see if i can get it to play in firefox um but uh it's not get it's it's guess the race karen it's not um oh, oh yeah i was gonna say the, re the reason why i know we're not playing that but the reason why i gave it a hundred is about as bad as that white man minding his business and them niggas coming in there fucking with him and then he gets arrested. I'm like, no, fuck you. Why you bothering him? Oh, yeah, in the airport. Yes, that's why I get a hundred because it remind me of that bullshit. Leave people alone. I shot you. I shouldn't be charged with shit. Don't be bothering people. Okay, but even in that case, like, that's not, would that have been a hundred? Wasn't that man white that was being fucked with? Yes, but I'm I'm still, okay. you know, how much am I fucked with in a okay. hundred? Okay, all right, Karen's making new rules. Uh, for some ah! reason, the video doesn't want to load on um in Firefox. Oh uh, no! Yeah, hold on. I might have one more. I'll give it one more try, guys. We'll see if this works. Ah, uh, fuck! <laughs> I was like, why? Why are y'all making this so hard? Um. All right, let's see. Um, oh. Loading. Mm -hmm. Trying to play. Let me know. Can y'all hear this? While filming a prank video. Uh, hold on, let me rewind it a little bit. Video. This happened Sunday at a mall in yeah, Virginia. Officials say 21-year-old Tanner Cook was shot in the stomach by 31-year-old Alan Cauley. Cook was trying to prank Cauley on video for his channel Classified Goons. Cauley now faces three charges, including use of a firearm to commit a felony. Cook says the incident won't stop him from making prank videos. All right, Karen, guess the race of Tanner Cook of Certified Goons. Oh, Tanner Cook is white. Karen saying white for Tanner Cook. Let's check the chat room, see what they believe for his race. Um, um, and I don't know the race of the person that shot him, so we can't guess that. Yeah, I'm sorry. It just, it just that just bothers me. It's like you're doing you're doing a prank. I'm not in on a prank, then I get fined for, for fucking you up for fucking with me. That don't make sense. Leave me alone. White of house find out, white and stupid, white dumbass, all TikTok, you don't stop white. Tanner so white, play too fucking much white. Everybody said white on this one, and everyone got it right. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, I wonder what the prank was. You know, because they, they don't say exactly what the prank was. I think they said something. It involved Google Translate is what they said. But they don't say, like, well, let's see. The shooter, Alan Coley, was working for DoorDash at the time and told Cook multiple times to get away from him. Uh, the YouTuber is known for pulling audacious practical jokes on unsuspecting, audacious practical jokes for on unsuspecting strangers. Some of his videos include fake Target thug employee Frank fake vomit on Uber drivers, and taking rackets from tennis players' prank. That's what I'm talking about. You was bound to get your ass whooped a shot. You just randomly harassing people, dog. Right. Um. Yeah, all right. So let's go to the next one. Karen is one of one so far. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, a 78, 78 year old Missouri woman was arrested on bank robbery charges. Oh, shit. Shit, robbing banks? Bonnie Gooch walked in to Gopert Financial Bank. <laughs> That's not like enough. You're in the middle of two buck two down. That's in the middle of nowhere. Two buck two. Gulch. You're in the, you're in the, that's what I meant. <laughs> you're up in the mountains in the gulch. And allegedly handed a note to the tailor, teller and demanded thousands in cash. She also left a note saying, thank you. Sorry. I didn't mean to scare you before driving off with the cash. She now sits in jail on $25,000 bond. Uh, or I guess, yeah, with a bond amount of 25,000. So she can't pay it. She was wearing a black N95 mask, black sunglasses, and plastic gloves. She entered the bank Wednesday, slipped the teller a note, and said, I need 13000 in small bills. Surveillance video shows Miss Gooch at one point banging on the counter, mandating a speedier delivery of the cash. Before leaving in her Buick Enclave with his handicap registration displayed. Ah, ah! Hard to track down, the sounds. <laughs> Well, you know, she's going to power close to the buildings. They found her in her vehicle smelling strongly of alcohol with cash strewn across the floor. Open and shut case. Didn't get far, apparently. She was arrested and charged with one count of stealing or attempting to steal from a financial institution. When officers first approached her, they were kind of confused. It's a little old lady who steps out. We weren't sure initially we had the right person. <clears throat> However, this is not her first run in with the law. <gasps> she also has two other convictions, one for robbery in California in 1977 and another for a bank robbery in 2020, where she reportedly handed the teller a birthday card that said, this is a robbery written onto it. Uh, she has no diagnosed ailments, but due to her age, the department was trying to determine if any underlying health factors could have contributed to the incident. What? She's been doing this since... Guess the race. 1973. White. Karen's going with white for some reason. I wonder why. Let's check the chat room and see what they believe. Uh, 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 okay, wait. No, the chat. There's a little bit of a delay, guys. And yes, her last name is Gooch. G-O-O-C-H. D.B. Cooper White. Large Marge White. White. Golden Girls. Uh, <laughs> Golden Girls 11 White. <laughs> That's hilarious, Trey. Oh, Gooch was drunk on booze and is very white. Uh, Big Bank Bonnie is Blanca. I'm going with she. Well, I'm going white. She then got away with too much shit. Miss Daisy got to get her money for Piggly Wiggly somehow. White. Oh, no. They emphasize with her. White empathize. I get it. They empathize with her. White. Granny on the run for the last time. White. 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 Be Arthur tripping. White. The correct answer is white. <laughs> You kind of look like Large Marge, though. Whoever said that, <laughs> ah, you get bonus points. Oh, she was so drunk, it like she was leaning over when they took the picture. Mm -hmm. Man, should have I been doing this since 1975? Robin, Robin, Robin Banks, dog. Like, could you imagine you get a birthday card that's like I'm robbing this bitch? Yeah, it's like, oh, this little sweet lady got a birthday card. Yes, that's gonna be a prime instrument. It, it a little bit. Uh, all right, Karen is two for two. So you know what that means, guys. Bonus round. Bitch, I ain't racist. How can I be racist about anybody or anything in my life? How can I call them niggas? Just call them niggas. Gold, gold chain wearing pride. You should be. Biggie, All right, bonus round. Karen is two for two. Can she finish out on a perfect evening? I'm going to try. All right, let's see. No screaming, no yelling, no phones. Florida teacher accused of organizing fights at a middle school. What? We betting on the kids? He gambled and gone too far. Kids can't talk about their periods, but they can make each other bleed. Oh, apparently so. A woman identified as a teacher at Griffin Middle School in Tallahassee, Florida, is facing charges for contributing to the delinquency of a minor for what courts called an alleged role in organized fights in her classroom. See what happened when y'all dropped the standards? The documents note that at a school, 
that a school resource department deputy was alerted March 24th that students were being allowed to fight in 23-year-old Angel Footman's classroom. 23? You a baby. Right? No wonder you thought they should be able to fight. Uh, school administrators were also shown videos that allegedly show several fights taking place March 22nd, March 23rd. According to the documents, several sixth grade girls told detectives they had participated in planned fights during school hours, and they alleged they were invited back for additional fights. They also reported that footmen made statements including 30 seconds, no screaming, no yelling, no phones. A detective indicate, indicated, I guess indicated. Did they get a cut? What's happening here? What do you mean? The, the kids? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they got cut, probably. Ah! A detective indicates in a probable cause affidavit that he interviewed video, he reviewed videos and identified footman sitting at her desk, failing to intervene and making statements including no screaming, no nothing, and stop pulling hair. The documents also said no records of footman reported in fights to administrators were found. Footman told the investigators she did not organize the fight, but she failed to call for help or take quick action to stop the altercations or report them to the administrators. According to court documents, she now faces four counts of contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Also, like, that's that's a young person's excuse. Mm -hmm. Like, you sound 23 when you say some shit like, I didn't organize the fights, I just didn't stop them. It's like, well, bitch, that's your job. You are the adult. Yeah, but also it's like, that's dumb. Like, yes. like you still gonna go to the same jail for saying that, like, you needed a whole different alibi than that. That's not a good alibi. Mm -mm, that's a young alibi. Right. I didn't actually organize them. I just let them fight. You know, right. I all I did was open the Google Calendar. I didn't tell them to make appointments. <laughs> they made them fight appointments. I didn't tell them to put their name on the board. They did. Yeah. They signed up for the fights. I just provided the chalkboard to sign up. <laughs> I didn't tell them to, to put their name in the Sweet 16. They did that on their own. Well, guess the race of Angel Footman. Angel Footman is black. All right. Uh, let's check the chat room and see what they believe. Black says, Dre. Um, also, like, you really trust these kids not to have phones? That's why they got Ooh, video of it. Right. Because, of course, the kids have phones. The phones are attached to them at the hip. Uh, let's see. Black. Donisha King. Black. The Donna <laughs> King of the school. Fair one. Black. Only in America. Don King as teacher. Black. Nothing else to do, Sal. Black. Now that's what I call critical race theory, Donita King. Oh. That's the real Tallahassee pain, black. The correct answer is black. <laughs> I do like the idea of her as an actual fight promoter like Don King, though. That that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be the rumble in the jungle gym. We gonna have it's gonna be the thriller by the Manila folders. <laughs> oh man! It's gonna be a massacre by the monkey bars. <laughs> oh, your monkey ball massacre! Yes. Oh man! I will. I. I. I now I do want to see that. I don't think kids should be fighting in school, but now I kind of do. You know, now I'm screaming at that. Like, come on. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, all right. <laughs> Let's go to the final thing. Let's talk about the sword ratchetness. All right, gonna be the revenge of recess. Uh, <laughs> uh, two men hospitalized at the game of it's getting ready to be hot by the hot scotch. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shit they're gonna be saying. Um, it's <laughs> they, we got 11 rounds by the merry go round. Come on, y'all, blood by the school bus. <laughs> 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 Oh, all right. Um, we have fun. Um, all right. The conflict by the cafeteria. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the assassination at the assembly. All right. <laughs> Two men were hospitalized after a game of Monopoly ends in a sword fight. 
Oh shit! This is a. Hey, this is why you shouldn't play Monopoly. But yep. it should end in the sword fight. Either way, I've seen you know people flat fall out of a Monopoly. Yeah, I feel like any Monopoly where people don't get murdered at the end, you didn't play the game right. No, you did not. So about not turning the board over. It was a game in Brussels. It turned bloody after an irritated man approached the players with a Japanese samurai sword. Police say the fight erupted around 5 a.m. Who the fuck is playing Monopoly at 5 a.m.? I don't know. You know what that means? They have been playing all night. Yeah, somebody was like, let's cash in. No, we ain't cashing in. They have been playing Monopoly. You got boardwalk and park place. Fuck you. They have been playing Monopoly on the sidewalk outside their home. On the sidewalk. That's some thug ass Monopoly. X and shit crawling on it. That's some thug ass Monopoly right there for your ass. We ain't, okay? that, we ain't at the kitchen table. That like you know you you know you from the hood when you play Monopoly outside. That's an inside game. <laughs> Game. It's five in the morning. The worms crawling off the sidewalks and shit. And y'all out here playing Monopoly, probably drunk. The that participants don't think it makes sense. The participants were loud enough to wake up the neighbors, a father and a son, who came outside to ask the group to leave. Things quickly became heated between the players and the father-son duo, resulting in the son bringing out a katana for defense. After the men started physically fighting, the sword scabbard got damaged, exposing exposing the blade of the sword. A local spokesperson told the news that the player tried to grab the katana and remove the holster and the son tried to get it back. Uh, ultimately, the, both the son and one of the Monopoly players were wounded and reportedly both taken to the hospital where the son who was struck in the artery remains in critical condition. Goddamn! He the one brought the sword. <laughs> right? You shouldn't even be fighting with a sword. It's Monopoly. Where's your thimble? <laughs> Pull out a car. Okay? <laughs> a horse or something? I mean, get an iron. What are we talking about yeah. here? Both both the injured Monopoly player who was discharged from the hospital and the son were arrested. Um, so he got to wake up to the arrest charge. That's that sucks. Right, man. Whew, it's crazy on these streets. Um, all right, that's it for today. Programming note: no sh- regular show tomorrow because we're gonna have to do bulky sports tomorrow because um we normally would have done it on Friday this week. But Friday, I'm supposed to be on the Karen Hunter show um, at five o'clock on like Sirius satellite radio. So if y'all got Sirius or whatever, check your boy out. I'm, I'll try to send out a link or something to remind y'all on my social media. But uh, so balls deep tomorrow for the premium people. Um, and yeah, that's it for 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 today's show. Thanks for listening. Um, until next time, I love you. I love you too. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Have a good rest of your night. Peace.